so in this uh, lecture we are going to do some ICU rounds. You know about the ECG changes in coronary artery disease, but when a ECG given to you when a patient with chest pain, what are the things you must do, what are the things you must not do, we will do it uh, as a patient based interactive session in this uh, particular lecture. So what you are going to make is an ICU rounds, especially the CCU rounds. So each bed may have a, a patient who has got uh, some ECG, some complaint. And we are going to see how to manage uh, each one of these patients in a, a different time frame of uh, ACS and different drugs, different modalities of treatment, how to select a particular modality of treatment in that particular ACS with a patient-based interactive session. So this I have already told you that this initial five minutes in any acute chest pain patient is very important. Any acute chest patient should be seen immediately and the ECG should be taken immediately. Before that, we must have a focused history, the duration and nature of chest pain, what is his hemodynamic status, whether he is in shock or whether he is hemodynamically stable. Within 5 minutes, you must take a ECG. Please remember to look at all pulses in any acute chest pain and also the patients because the patients a disparity in pulses, predominant back pain and patient having Loyal impulses are not felt, a predominant back pain with pulses, asymmetrical pulses with the AR may tell you that the patient may have a dissection. So all pulses should be felt in all acute chest pain patient and always auscultate for as I told you about for the AR, acute chest pain with the acute AR or MR gallops like that. So these are the things you must deep focus history, focus clinical examination, then immediate ECG. This is a five minutes, any patient with acute chest pain. This is the initial five minutes. So as far as the history is concerned, if the pain is maximal and onset, it is likely to be the section. Whereas pain in ischemic uh, condition will be gradually building up. Careful clinical examination, the inequality of pulses, AR, pain radiating to back and below the umbilicus. Ischemic pain never radiates below umbilicus. So when you suspect a dissection, please do echo or trans esophageal echo or CT scan before you thrombolyze a patient because in thrombolysis is contraindicated in acute dissection. So acute dissection also may present with ST elevation because if there is a coronary dissection, the patient will have ST elevation. So you will automatically thrombolyze this patient. If the patient has got dissection, it is going to be dangerous. So thrombolysis is contraindicated in dissection. So first patient we are seeing is this is a patient who has got chest pain of 3 hours. So you can say the patient has got ST elevation, L2, L3 and AVF and there is a significant ST depression in V2. So he has got probably a post ST elevation which is showing this ST uh, depression in anterior leads. So the question is what will you do for the CCG, heparin antiplatelet, thrombolyze, uh, neither referent relax. So the patient with a 3 hours of chest pain, so the ST elevation, so here are the options, the thrombolysis is the best. So we have to thrombolyze if the patient does not have any contraindication because it's a ST elevation ACS, acute total occlusion with a red thrombus. So if the PCI option is not given here, so the best option in this uh, particular four options, you will be thrombolyzing the patient. Now I'm showing the ECG patient with the same amount of chest pain, three hours, but the patient has got the ST segment depression. So here he has got a non-ST elevation ACS. So what will you do for this patient? Heparin antiplatelets, thrombolyze this patient and statins, sublingual nitrate and white, 2 and 4 and 2 and 3. The question is what you will not do. What you will not do in this patient as I told you in the last uh, uh, interactive session also, when the patient has got assisting depression, non-ST elevation ACS, you should not thrombolyze this patient. And of course, I told you the rupture of the plaque and I told you the difference between non-ST elevation MI and non-ST elevation MI. Non-ST elevation MI is uh, non-ST elevation ACS is because of subendocardial injury, ST segment depression. ST elevation ACS is ST elevation acute critical thrombus, white thrombus in non-ST elevation ACS and here it is a total occlusion with a red thrombus. So we divide the acute coronary syndrome into ST elevation ACS and non-ST elevation ACS. So ST elevation ACS, the ST elevation and also the this is the one indication to thrombolysis or do a primary PCI and thrombolysis you must see for contraindications for thrombolysis 
and of course if there is no contraindication you can thrombolyze this patient and don't wait for troponin or any other things if the patient has got classical ST elevation suggestive of uh, subepical injury. So there is no need to wait for uh, troponin here to um, thrombolyze. So as soon as, as at the earliest thrombolyze or do a primary PCR at the earliest if the ECG is very typical. Only when the ECG is very atypical and you suspect semi, you do all the other things. Whereas if the patient is coming with either ST segment depression or a symmetrical T wave inversion with one or two days of chest pain, here it's an acute chest pain, here he comes with one day of chest pain. So the non-ST elevation is divided into unstable angina or non-ST elevation MA depending upon the troponin is positive or negative. For the same ECG change, if the troponin is positive, he is called non-ST elevation MA. If the troponin is negative, he is called unstable angina. So only the troponin decides between MI and unstable angina and not the ECG alone. So we already seen the differences between STEMI and non-STEMI. So the most important thing is that it is a total occlusion here. So critical occlusion here, it is thrombolysis or PCA here. So risk determines the intervention in unstable angina or non-STEMI. So we have already told you why you should not thrombolyze a patient with a stigma depression. So thrombolyzing a patient with a stigma depression increase some mortality. That's why we don't thrombolyze a patient who has got the, so this is why we never thrombolyze a patient with a stigma depression. So once again, I'm showing a patient who has got a chest pain of two hours. So once again, this patient has got ST elevation. So V2, V3, V4 and uh, entire lateral leads. So LAD plus LCX or has got a total occlusion of left mind. So I am asking you which is the best option here, thrombolysis or PCI or heparin or antiplatelets and the best option in any ST elevation MI is primary PCI. So there is no doubt about this because 